everyone, welcome to another Where Are They Now video. These videos, if you are new to this concept, are where I go back two years, back in time to the exact same month, and revisit my monthly favorites from that month and let you know where they are now, am I still using them, have they been replaced, and so forth. I missed last month, it's the first one I've missed in years and years and years. July got a little out of hand for me with my videos, but I'm back for this month, however, Looking forward to the rest of the year. I'm not sure if I will continue this as a monthly series. I may do it quarterly or as time permits. I'm not gonna give it up on it entirely. I just don't know how much longer I'll do it. Mostly because I've been trying to declutter and I don't physically have all of the products or all the clothing anymore and I'm not sure how relevant this video is without being able to still hold them up and show them to you. Let me know in the comments below if it matters to you or not whether or not I still physically have some of the products to talk about. So with that in mind, let's go back in time to August 2019. Let's go through the favorites. I have my description box printed out from way back when in very large font, so I don't need my readers to read them. That has changed since 2019. And let's go through the categories, starting with beauty. So in August 2019, two years ago, was when BK Beauty launched by my dear friend Lisa J Makeup. I can't believe it's been two years already. Time has sure flown. Her business has absolutely flourished as it should have because her brushes are outstanding. To this day, two years later, the only thing that has changed is that I use more of her brushes because she's released more. There are two or three brushes in my daily routine that are not made by BK Beauty. The rest of them are. But back in 2019, the two standouts for me, first of all, it was the 101 brush, which is a slanted foundation brush, which is amazing. I love it. Mine is recently cleaned. It is in fact a brush. It is a dense brush, but when you use it to apply foundation, it gives it such an airbrushed finish. It's almost like using a beauty blender. It's insane. Of course, since 2019, she's also come out with her own beauty sponge, which I very much like. But since then, she's released a few new brushes and the one that I go to and use for almost, I don't wanna say everything, but so many things is the 106 brush. I use this primarily to apply my foundation. I love the density of it and I love the size of the brush. I also use this to blend out my contour. I use this to um, tap in concealer under my eye and on my face. I use this to apply or blend any kind of liquid or cream makeup on my face. It has so many uses. You could probably do a full face of makeup minus the eyes with this brush, it is fantastic. And then the other favorite from 2019 was the 201 brush, which is the larger of the two blending brushes that originally was launched. And to this day, I still use this brush every single day to apply the color in my contour or socket line and to just generally blend out. An absolutely fabulous brush. Can't, cannot say it enough, it is not because she's my friend. Definitely check out the brushes. And I do have a discount, 10% across site-wide. It's uh, Marnie 10, and I'll put that in the description box. The next was actually a recommendation from Lisa J, and it was an Essence palette, and I will try to insert a picture of it if I can even find it, that has since been discontinued, and since I have been doing major decluttering, especially since 2019, I've gutted my bathroom and gotten rid of a lot of things. That didn't make the cut. I can't remember where it went off to. I know somebody in my life has it. But I did find a palette that I reach for more that surprisingly has a lot of color overlap. And it's from the brand Profusion, and it's their Mauves. And at first glance, you're gonna say no. That one was very warm-toned and almost coppery orange. True, but the lighting here is making everything look a little pinker, but, but there was, some, there were, I should say, good English today, Marnie, some pinks and metallics and browns in that palette, and they're all in this one as well. The only two shades that are distinctly missing from this is there was a very orangey shade and there was a very cool toned gray shade, neither of which are in this palette, but this palette is very budget friendly. I believe it's $4. And I reach for Profusion over Essence these days. I just love 
the Profusion eyeshadow palettes, especially the, um, are these 10 pans? Yes, the 10 pans. I can count too. Apparently English and counting, tough today. Um, another favorite from 2019 was the Physicians Formula Healthy Powder. Love the matching foundation, love the powder. Both have since been discontinued. You can still sometimes find the foundation in stores, but since then, I, my favorite drugstore, I should qualify, my favorite drugstore powder foundation is the L'Oreal Age Perfect. I actually set my makeup with it today. I have it in the shade 300 Ivory. It is absolutely fabulous, very soft and creamy, and I don't even think I should qualify it as drugstore. It's just good, whether it's holding up against Wander Beauty, um, Too Faced, it's very nice. It's very creamy, and the fact that I can actually swatch it just shows you how pigmented it really is. If you want it a little less pigmented, instead of applying with the pad that comes with it that I would advise against, just use a fluffy brush. And if you do want to like use it in your purse, like say, um, if you missed that video, by the way, this would be good for your essential makeup kit for your purse. You can just tap your finger in, load it up, and then use it to cover up any blemishes that may pop up during the day. Handy little guy. Another favorite from back in the day was this guy. This is a two-in-one rose quartz roller. And I remember saying how nice it is just because it's cold to roll on your face. And that is true, it's nice. But since then, I have been introduced to this set, which you've seen me talk about and heard me talk about so much, I don't wanna talk about it anymore. Um, this is a two-in-one facial massaging set. Two-in-one meaning it's two separate products. It comes together in a kit. It is very inexpensive. It's around $15 for both of them and they're both battery operated. So yes, you can roll them along your face, but you can also turn them on and get a nice little massage of vibration and rolling at the same time. And they are pretty cold to the touch as well. Now this is a favorite that I kind of forgot that I had. One of the reasons I like doing these videos is because it reminds me what I actually have and may have stopped using for whatever reason and brings it back to me. And this is the Beauty Bio Glow Pro. It's an at-home microneedling device. You push it, it's just a battery in it. I think this is the same battery from two years ago. Um, you put the battery in it, you turn it on, it emits a red light, which the red light's supposed to do something. I think it kills bacteria, anti-aging, I can't remember. But more importantly, it has all of these little tiny micro needles that are great for helping with, I shouldn't do this while my makeup is on, great for helping with skin texture, hyperpigmentation. But honestly, the reason I started using this again at night is because it helps your serums and really expensive skincare soak into your skin better. I mean, you're poking tiny little holes in your face. That definitely seems like it would make your skincare absorb a little bit better. So I've started using this again. Glad that I rediscovered it sitting in my drawer. My favorite setting mist from 2019 was the Morphe setting mist and honestly, it probably still is my all-time favorite. The one thing I don't like about it is because it's opaque and an aerosol, it's really hard to tell when you're running short and so you kind of almost always have to have a backup of it. I do get a lot of things sent to me in PR, strangely, a lot of setting sprays. So I didn't repurchase it the last time I ran out of it. I don't remember when that was and I've been sort of working my way through everything else. But then I went out and bought this because I'd heard so many people rave about it and I really like it a lot. It's the Milani Make It Last Matte because when I need a setting spray is usually in the summer and I'm getting sweaty. So I don't need to add any dewiness to my face. And that is what I use today and I love it. I, For all time longevity, the Morphe might be a teeny bit better, but I like the price point of this. I do like how my makeup looks under this and it's a little easier to pick up than the Morphe one. Since 2019, when I talked about this in favorites, I have bought so many bottles of this, I use nothing else to clean my brushes. It's the Cinema Secrets makeup remover, brush cleaner, and it's incredible. I just fill up a tiny little bowl. All you need to do is just take the very tip of the brush, dunk it in, and then immediately start rubbing it off on a washcloth or paper towel and watch the makeup just melt off. You don't have to rinse it and it dries like a brush this size dries in minutes. A brush like this could take a few hours. And then the last favorite from Beauty from August 2019 was this guy. It's a silicone pouch slash pad. I've gone on to order, oh gosh, I don't know, I think I have five or six of these now. So you can use this to lay it flat on your counter so you can rest your hot styling tools on it and your counter won't get damaged. And then when you're done, 
using it, it is a pouch. So you can stick your flat iron, your curling iron, whatever heat tool you use, you stick the hot part in here and you can throw this right back into a cabinet, a drawer, into a suitcase if you're traveling and you don't have to worry about setting fire to anything or doing any kind of heat damage to your furniture, cabinetry, etc. So these are great. They come in a lot of other colors than this neon -y hot pink and I found them on Amazon. Let's take a look back at the fashion favorites from August 2019. It started with a purse that I no longer have and it's funny looking back in this, I'll try to insert a picture. Um, I bought this in pursuit of this bag that I had in my head, this color, this style. Now fast forward a few years and this was really what I had been searching for. Now, <laughs> this bag, the YSL Nikki, is a significantly different price point than I believe was a Topshop purse that was maybe under $50. And I was going to say if you added up all the less expensive, more budget-friendly bags I bought trying to duplicate this look, I probably could have bought one of these. No, <laughs> no, I couldn't have. Um, but I would have had a lot less clutter and the point is, I'm not saying that you should run out and buy a luxury handbag, but it is kind of funny that this was the bag that in my subconscious, I was always trying to duplicate and just never got it right. So this is the bag I reach for when I want like more of a top handle, um, dressier type bag, something more neutral. This is the, this is the perfect neutral nude shade. And this hasn't gotten a lot of use lately because I haven't really been going anywhere special but I'm hoping come this fall, there'll be more opportunities to use her. And yes, she's a her, because her name is Nikki. Speaking of bags that aren't the Marnie bag, I know. Um, another favorite was the Social Threads Messenger bag that I'm happy to say, as of filming this, they've re-released, and I believe they've released it in more colors as well, and I still like it. Um, however, obviously, if I'm looking for more of a crossbody bag for travel, do I even need to? Yes, I guess I do. This is the bag. <laughs> this is the bag. That bag did factor into my thought process when I was designing this bag. Some of the features on that bag influenced this one. And then I took it a little bit farther. So absolutely, this is the one I'm gonna be reaching for, always reach for. Honestly, I just rotate between the colors. Unless I'm going out somewhere fancy and then I'll reach for the YSL bag, but I just rotate between the tan, the black, and the bone. And yes, um, I do like this strap, and this strap was influenced by another favorite, this strap. This strap is the Social Threads strap, and while yes, Gigi New York does offer some additional straps that you can order um, to accessorize the Marnie satchel, Social Threads by far has the best selection of um, bag straps. They just do. If you want some with patterns and different colors, I think the ones at Gigi New York are a lot more sedate, which is something that I personally wanted. Um, I like having the option of having the wild and crazy leopard, obviously, I mean, look at me. But it's also nice to have something that's just neutral and calm and goes with everything as well. Um, now, these aren't quite the same quality as the Gigi New York bags I'm looking at. Like, these aren't trimmed in the matching leather. The um, hardware isn't quite as solid, but these are still fabulous and I would absolutely recommend them and I would absolutely buy more of them. I have bought more of them since that video. So if you're looking for some really great uh, bag straps, a little more budget friendly than Gigi New York, go with these. Now another fashion favorite from August 2019 were these sneakers and the shoelaces that are in them. These are the Madewell Sidewalk sneaker and since August 2019 they have released multiple versions of these. The fully solid all white ones are harder to find. Um, as of filming this, they have one that's almost all white except this little piece here is silver. There's some that have this colored in, there's some that have leopard. So there are lots of options. The actual all white sneaker, I don't know if that's still available. I often get asked if I can recommend an all white sneaker other than this one. And I know of other ones, but it's hard for me to recommend something I haven't actually worn. So. Um, I'm not gonna tell you because I don't think it's right to recommend something when I really don't know how it wears, how it fits, any of that stuff. Um, but the Madewell sidewalk sneaker is really nice because it's a little bit more elongated. It's not very, it doesn't make my legs look stumpier than they already are. And 
the shoelaces. So probably hard to see because it's white on white, but I removed the shoelaces that came with it because I hate tie shoes. I just think they look, I don't know, kind of clunky and make my feet look larger than they are. So I like a, more of a slip on concept. And I found these no tie shoelaces years ago on Amazon. And since then I have bought, I can't tell you how many pairs of them. They have them in kid size, they have them in adult size, they have them in different colors. I just keep getting the white ones. And I basically have replaced, other than my shoes, my sneakers that I wear for actually working out, I've replaced all my lace-up shoes with these no ties. And these are one of my all-time bestsellers in my Amazon store as well. I mean, people just love these. I love them. They're a little silicone. There's some stretch to them they give. So it's just easy to slide your shoes on and off. Clearly, I should have mentioned, still a favorite in 2021. And then the very last fashion favorite from August 2019 was, you're gonna laugh, I think it was this one. It's the Walmart Star sweater. And these sweaters come out around now. I will admit I'm pre-filming this. We, I think as you're watching this, I'm not sure when this is gonna actually end up going up, but you may be watching this while I'm in Oxford moving Shane into his little house for uh, the school year. So right now, as I'm filming this in early August, it's not back on, on the website, but every year, Walmart, their Time and True line, release these $15 sweaters, and I love them. They're lightweight, they're easy to wear, they're easy to wash, they run a little small, so I always size up to a medium, so I have a little bit more room to tuck in, but this was the sweater that started it, and since then, I also mentioned this Love sweater was a favorite in August 2019. There was a Chow sweater that I absolutely love. I believe I wore it when we went to Vermont that fall, I think. Can't find that, but I have stuff spread out all over the house now that I've basically taken over two upstairs closets with my seasonal clothing, so forgive me. Um, things get a little out of hand, but since then I've bought the same sweater with the gray with white hearts, pink with white hearts, the navy with red and white hearts, and this one, probably my favorite that I only wear on Fridays, my Frye one. So, who knows what will get released uh, this fall, but I am excited to find out and pretty much can guarantee that I'm going to buy every single one of them. They wear almost like long sleeve t-shirts. They're that soft um, and they're easily layered, which is also kind of nice. You can layer a cardigan or a blazer or something over it. Obviously wears well under a jacket as well. As well. I love them. And then the only lifestyle favorite that I mentioned back then was the trap candle in the scent orange clove. It is currently not available on the Amazon website where I ordered it from. I'm sure it's available on the Trap Candle website, so I'll link that below. But what I just ordered and I'm really excited about is the Orange Clove Wax Melts. Years ago, I had bought one of those mug warmer things. You just plug it, like I have one sitting on my nightstand and you turn it on and I set my coffee on it in the morning and it keeps my coffee warm as I read my email and things like that. And then after that, I usually set a candle on the mug warmer and it heats up the wax without having to light the candle and it scents the room. And I have a lot of empty candle jars and I realized I could start using those wax melts and put them in back in the old candle jars, specifically all of my old orange clove ones, if I can find them. So I just ordered a, a box of the wax melts. I haven't tried it yet, so I can't tell you how it works, but I'm really excited to give it a try and kind of repurpose those empty candle holders that I seem to accumulate. So those are my favorites from 2019. I should mention, if you're still here, I'm not wearing the same dress that I wore back in 2019. I decluttered that one and I'm really sad about that because I loved that dress. I would wear it every year, except that dress is unavailable and it was from Steinmark, which doesn't exist anymore, which is also very sad. And in my line of work, it's really hard to hold onto clothing that isn't available anymore because I take pictures of what I wear almost every single day and I know from the consumer side, from me being a fan of other influencers, it's very frustrating to see someone post a picture of themselves in an outfit and when you ask them where to get it, you can't. So it's very hard for me to justify holding onto clothes that don't exist anymore or come from stores that don't exist anymore because I am constantly buying new stuff to show you and for campaigns and stuff like that. I kind of have to be a little ruthless and from time to time get rid of some of my favorites. And that, that one was a great dress. 
Anyway, that is the end of looking back. Now we can start looking forward. There is a lot coming up. Fall is definitely my favorite season. And so there's gonna be a lot of fashion stuff coming up as well as some beauty things and you know, just all the good stuff. So please make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you had fun and I will see you in the next video. Bye.